Howdy y'all, I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you guys are safe and I hope you guys are healthy. So today's video is going to be going over something that is rampant in the streetwear community, streetwear scene, and that is going to be bootleg sneakers. And not just uh, Jordan 1s, but really just bootlegs in general and what I think about them and would I wear any of them? I have two to review today and that is the Fugazi um, one in the chambers as well as the Ore NYC Empire City Highs. I got the first version. Uh, they're not my sneakers, they're actually courtesy of my very, very good friend, Billy. So shout out to Billy, thank you so much for letting this happen. And uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Josh and I like talking about clothes and personal style. And if that's your thing and you like what you watch, feel free to subscribe, I appreciate you all. We just hit 2,000 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you all for your support, and I can't thank you enough. Let's get right into the video. So, first things first, do I actually like bootlegs do I would I wear them what are my particular thoughts on them and in my opinion I think it is absolutely amazing for smaller companies to venture out and make footwear of course it is absolutely impossible and hard to make footwear from scratch so a lot of times people will draw inspiration from other silhouettes and kind of add their own details and kind of redesign it and so long as so long as those details are particular to the actual smaller brand and it actually has a certain identity so where you can associate it more with the smaller brand than just think that it's the original uh, silhouette, then I think that that is perfectly fine in my eyes. And I know that's kind of vague, I'll explain a little bit more as we go, but um, bootlegs and kind of redoing silhouettes is nothing new. It's been happening for decades and decades and decades and from multiple different people or brands throughout time, whether it be smaller brands to complete just luxury brands, they also have their reiterations of silhouettes. So some examples that actually come to mind when it comes to bootleg silhouettes or redoing, reiterating silhouettes is Bape. They do a lot of it with their Bape stuff. Um, they also have their own version of the shell toe as well as like some Air Max models, arguably some Air Max models. Uh, there is the Air Aries, which go for insane amounts of money. Uh, there is also the Banana Dunks, which I love so very much. I think they're hilarious. But uh, not just from smaller kind of street perspectives, there are also silhouettes from luxury brands, like I said earlier, like the SLP SL10H sneakers or the recesses from Rude, and then there's Collegium that do a really, really good version of kind of a classic silhouette, a classic maybe Jordan 1 silhouette mixed with kind of a blazer look as well. Even reaching as far back into the 80s when the Jordan 1s were first actually released, there were plenty of different companies who wanted to capitalize on that same silhouette with like maybe they replace the swoosh with something else or really whatever it may be. What is important to understand is that one of the ways that will enable you to appreciate these shoes more is to look at it as less of a ripoff of a sportswear classic and more so as smaller brands trying to put their own twist on something that is seen as a classic. On paper and from a business perspective, it only makes sense that if a silhouette or shape is popular, then you're going to want to jump on that, I guess you can call it a trend, but business-wise, it seems like a very sound idea to actually produce. People tend to already love that original product, so what is keeping them from enjoying the product if you recreate it in your own image? Now, of course, there is a very, very, very fine line to uh, really just keep an eye on when you're actually creating these things and there are legal complications that can come up which is very very problematic especially for a small brand uh, one particular instance comes to mind and that's Warren Lotus if you guys don't know the whole situation with Warren Lotus he would make uh, dunks and he would replace the swoosh with his own like Jason schema or hockey mask uh, swoosh but he would pretty much have the exact same silhouette of a dunk 
in the most hype colorways. And so what I think happened there is that he was trying to capitalize on some of the most sought after sneakers, the most expensive sneakers, and give it to people at a smaller price point. But the problem there is that they were so very identical and close to the original dunk and the only change was just the swoosh that he got a cease and desist and had to redesign his sneaker and the redesign was not very good, at least to me. Warren Lotus was trying to capitalize on things that were already popular, which I think was the problem there is that you could very, it was very easy to kind of mistake a pair of Warren Lotuses for a pair of the original maybe Stussies or Heineken's or I forget what other colorways he did. But yeah, it was really hard to distinguish between the two, which I think is where they went wrong there. So if you're going to redesign a Jordan 1, if you're going to redesign any sort of other silhouette, understand that you have to change a really good portion of it so that you're not in any legal trouble. But moving on to the review of two different shoes, it is going to be the Fugazi one in the chambers. I have the kind of natural neutral gray colorway courtesy of my buddy. And we're just gonna go start off with the packaging. So the Fugazi packaging is actually super, super good. This box is super, super sturdy, super thick. It has branding on top as well as on the sides here. And what I think is really cool about this one is that even the packaging has a lot of detail to it. It has this magnetic opening, which opens up into this kind of, I guess, Christian Louboutin red box opening right over here. It is also branded. And as you can see from the top of the box, there was a suede dust bag. Now, that is pretty much in line with a lot of what a lot of luxury uh, shoe companies will give you when you buy their shoes. So you have a suede dust bag that actually looks great. You have tissue paper that is actually custom made and it happens to be Trevor Gorgie himself on a wanted poster, which is also another just tiny little detail that kind of just set these all off. And then when it comes to the shoe, we have the one in the chambers. The shape of them is actually very impressive to me. Uh, compared to a Jordan 1, I think that, honestly, the quality is pretty on point. The leather is super, super soft, and the colors are great. It has a little bit more of a sail color than a true white. On the end of the aglets are these little like screw-on portions. I don't know if it'll focus on that, but what you can screw onto those are these little bullets, which are really, really cool. And just to mention a couple of more details about this shoe itself, it has this bandana print that's going around the collar. It, for the Wings logo, it has a customized one in the chamber. On the heel, it has these embossed bullets over here. Looks like there are five bullets and in some revolvers, if they hold six, there will be one in the chamber if there are five empty. The swoosh is obviously a revolver here. I think what is my favorite detail on this shoe itself is actually the toe box. The holes for ventilation are actually kind of not uniform and are actually bullet holes. And uh, on the bottom is going to be a customized Fugazi outsole. And last but not least, the insole is going to be customized as well. Which is, again, everything is about the details when it comes to this sneaker. It is on the actual tongue right over here at the top. It has branding. And on the inside, it basically has what the tissue paper was as well. So this shoe is jam-packed with so many different details. Is it really close to a Jordan 1? Yes, but there are so many different details that separate it from a Jordan 1 that in my eyes, it kind of stands on its own. So as far as Fugazi goes, I think that it is a great, great brand to follow. And what really kind of sets his brand off and sets it apart from every other brand out there, especially in the streetwear world, because there are millions, is that Trevor goes out and creates things and they are actually pretty top notch for what for what they charge. If I'm not mistaken, this as well as the Ore NYC pair re released and at retail they were less than $200, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. But this pair of shoes is a pretty great quality pair of shoes. Honestly, I would actually totally wear this pair as well. 
in what I think really is kind of great about Trevor and Fugazi is that they don't really take themselves too seriously. Of course, I'm sure they do, like, underneath it all, but his social media presence and the, I guess, attitude that he puts forth is that he's super, super whimsical, and I think that really, really shows in the brand as well. He has completely random, random items that he creates. He goes out of his way to create memes that is a great way to actually promote his brand and himself as a person as well so trevor fascinates me because he came out of nowhere and created things like north korea skate team as well as fugazi and i think that honestly he did an absolutely amazing job curating and creating his whole i guess presence on social media so that's the fugazi one in the chambers a1 stuff, I really love it. Moving on to the next one. All right, up next we have a shoe from another YouTuber, one that you've heard about on this channel before and I'm sure you guys follow him as well. It is Ray Mia and his brand Ore NYC in the Empire City Highs. Another shoe that I think is actually really cool and what I appreciate about them is that they're in a completely new and different colorway than any other Jordan 1 that we have available to us. So. First things first, the box. We have this Ore NYC Art Studio branding up on the top. Here, actually, here is the sizing information. This one was made in China and so were the Fugazis. When you open the box, you are welcomed with this. The Ore Times, kind of like a, a play on the New York Times newspaper wrapping paper for the shoes, which is super, super cool. We also, as far as packaging, have a dust bag, which I think is super, super dope. So what I have here for the Ore uh, Empire City Highs is the first version of them. This was the first release. I do not have the more recent version, but I actually like those a little bit better as far as color wise, because those are gray instead of green. But definitely, definitely follow Ray and keep up with his brand. And we also have extra laces. We have green to match the green of the actual shoes and we have a black pair of laces which is always super nice to have options so the shoes themselves boom empire city highs really really cool shoes i like i said absolutely love the colors and when i look at these all i can think about is how this just looks like a shoe made by ray the shade of the green the Jordan 1 shape is so good. And just going into some of the details, we have some Ore NYC branding on the tongue. We have sail laces in here right now. The toe box as well as the side panels are in this sail leather. We have this green, I'm not entirely sure what to call it, like what shade of green this is considered, but it is super, super nice. We have a vintage outsole, kind of pre-yellowed right there. Even like the stitching right inside of the outsole is actually green as well. And then the smaller, finer details, the swoosh or what is supposed to be the swoosh is the Statue of Liberty, which is actually stitched in, embroidered in, which is absolutely amazing. We have some branding over here on the collar, which is the Ore New York Art Studio logo. And then we also have right over here is an embossed New York City skyline as well as on the inside of the heel as well. Just kind of a blank Jordan 1 outsole here. Super, super cool. Leather is, le the leather quality is really impressive as well. There's not enough good things I can say about this shoe. I very highly suggest it to really anyone and I think it is an amazing alternative. I know Jordan 1s nowadays are incredibly high priced so if you want one and you want one that is good quality go with this one or go with the fugazis another detail that i actually forgot to mention about these is that the insole itself is a map of the new york city subway system super cool and something that nobody else is going to see other than you knowing that your insole is so detailed so both of these shoes i would absolutely wear I really, really like the creativity that's put, it's kind of mixed with like the classicness of the silhouette with the creativity of these different creators. 
I really highly suggest these two to you. And as far as bootlegs, try not to look at them as bootlegs. Try to look at them as their own product. And then you might be able to see and determine whether or not you like these shoes or you don't like these shoes. That's about all I really have to say about uh, Jordan 1 bootlegs or just bootleg shoes in general. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, do you like them? Do you dislike them? Put it in the comments down below. Let's have a conversation. And uh, yeah, shout out for these shoes. Thanks, Billy. Yeah, thank you guys so very much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, I appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one.